Anyway, welcome everybody for our next adventure in wonderful Terranova National Park. Uh, currently in uh, Malady Head, part of the Terranova National Park. Campsite 80. Campsite 80. Uh, Two Loons Adventures. Here's our next adventure. <laughs> Stay tuned. I'd say it's about what, 30 degrees here? Uh, last time I checked on the vehicle was 28. Okay. It feels like probably 32 here in sight. And look at me, dressed in black like Johnny Cash. <laughs> Could you get any hotter? <laughs> We're down campsite 80. So what's the campsite numbers up here? 100, is it? 97 there. There's 98 up. This is the area, Authentics. These, these are all across the country, aren't they? By far as I know, it's a kind of a new thing. I didn't think that they actually had any power in them, but they do, but it looks like they got solar power, right? Campsite 97. Wood stove in them. Campsite 98. We're gonna show you, we're walking up in a part of Malady Head, <coughs> a part of the park that's all these authentics. And they are nice, eh? Looks pretty cool. How big are they? Okay, this big? This big. From there to there. Too bad it wouldn't open that we could actually get footage from inside. What's, yeah. what's this, canvas? Yes. Yes, I get. And I'm obviously, not like, stuff. oh man, it'd be so nice out here in the winter. Or I mean, the fall, because I don't say they're open. It's not like, it's not a canvas, it's a. Vinyl cable, I don't know what it is. I guess it's pretty durable. It would have to be. You were saying earlier, I, I wonder what are they? Are they like a Swedish design or something, right? Oh look, those rats are strapped in. Yeah, all along there's a, 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 all straps are. Man, they are nice. I guess that's probably stretches or something to heat. How many people do you say sleep? There's, there's five bunks there. Put draw straight across and up top. Huh? And there you are, absolutely beautiful. Look at a little USB port huh, for charging your gear. Wow. This, okay, what's the solar one? There's a couple lights in the couple side. Couple lights there. and a USB. Wood stove. And there's a vehicle coming up the road, and this is probably where they're coming, right here. Yeah. What are you doing at my campsite? <laughs> They are big. How big do you think they are, Larry? I'd say... 16 by... Right? How, how yeah. big are they? Pardon? How big are they? Like about 10 okay, but I mean like... Oh, the yeah. 16. It's probably 16 by 16 14. by 20 or something like that. Got to applaud you guys. I got to say it. The comfort station down below, and just all the comfort stations. This is the first time here. I'll just send you out a bouquet in the sense of what a beautiful place here. Yeah. The washrooms, everything are spotless. Oh, thanks so much. Rest. Yeah, <laughs> thanks so much. Like myself and Larry, what, what would this be, Mr. Smitty? I'd say this is a beer proof storage spot. Not garbage cans, no. Not garbage, food. Oh, cool. They're all labeled for each site. It is too. That's right, they're, they're occupied, they're locked. Well, put your cooler in there, whatever up on top, bear proof. Yeah, that's what it's for. Guaranteed. Pretty cool. Just storage, yeah, cabins for your food or whatever, right? Your toothpaste. Lots of room or... for a bigger cooler. Yeah. Anything else you want to put on top? They are really nice though, man, I gotta say. Yeah, you can see the solar panel on the back there. there yeah, the solar panels, I don't know what wattage they be, but they're not running a whole lot. What'd you say was in a couple what lights seen up I seen there? There was a couple of small little LED lights. And it looked like and a charging a port. USB port. Now it looks like somebody's here at this one. Obviously their shoes are there, so I'm not gonna go any closer. Our good buddy, Keith Hallahan. They used to come up here before they got the, well, you know, it's Keith, of course, up to uh, yeah, up well, to Winterland, up to the campsite, right? He uh, 
him and his wife and their son used to come up here all the time. He always talked about them. He loved them. Don't they have the other ones up here, the uh, pads? There's supposed to be pads here too. Now, where are they? Are they the ones that's down by the water? No. Down on the other, uh, other side of the highway? There's four on the other side. You go down over the hill and you cross over the main highway here, and there's four down below. But those pads, they're they must be somewhere. Newman Sound, aren't they? I don't know where they're to. Have checked that out. Yeah, we're going to have to check that out. We'll get back to you on that. I guess he calls it the old mill. <laughs> it's old. Concrete starting to crumble in spots. Yeah, they got it all fenced in. Last time I was here, I was here salmon fishing down on the river, the Chirinova River, down on the back. And now they got it all fenced in for obvious reason. I say, like you said, concrete tumbling. I suppose yeah. it is those 1920s. The old mill, the beginning. The old mill on Anglebrook. That's what it's called, Anglebrook Road. It's an iconic landmark in Glovertown. Although now a shell, this towering concrete structure once represented prosperity and a future in the pulp and paper industry. Yeah, 1920s. In early 1920s, the Terranova Sulfate Company Limited acquired local timber licenses in the area. Then in 1921, through Norwegian financing, the company began the construction of the pulp and paper mill, which housed machine rooms, acid towers, digesters, and other parts of the mill. A medical clinic, school, and homes for the mill operators were also built inside the red gated community. This was a gated community. The Tiranova Sulfate Mill and the unsettled international money market, leaving developers with insignificant funds to complete the project. In the fall of 1921, after the government of Newfoundland refused to guarantee a loan, construction was halted. Despite continued efforts to save the mill, all timber and water, power rights, machinery, and mill buildings were sold to the Anglo-Newfoundland Development Company. The company felt the Glovertown Mill was not economically feasible. The decision was made to expand the Grand Falls operation and to ship the Terranova timber resources there. This gave rise to a new industry, the Terranova Logging Division. So, obviously it never ran. It wasn't completed. Viewing area, dark sky viewing area. You were saying you and Betty were here one time. Yeah, we were here a few years ago. And, Look, well, we, we were here, it was clear sky. And it was, see this. You and me. <laughs> <laughs> but at night here, like, you get a clear night here, the stars you can see is unreal. <clears throat> Spot. Holy, holy, holy shit. I take the phone out, get a couple of snaps. Does anything look familiar? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Minchin's Cove. That's Mount Stafford there. That's the hill we we were up on. Yeah, do that again. Just point. Okay. That hill right there. Yeah, do it again. Right over there. <laughs> what year was it that we come out here with the canoe club? 
Gee. We're talking about Minchin's Cove. It was a trip we did. That's a good that, question. What summer was that? I remember there was 16 of us. 2007 or 8, I think it was. Somewhere uh, around that time. Can, can you remember or do you have access to the pictures? Because it'd be nice to put in here now on the video some of the pictures. I've anyway, got a couple pictures. I don't know if we could actually use them. For sake is a place that we're gonna visit here today, you'll see on the video after this. Uh Newman Sound itself, the visitor center, which is further in the bay here. That's wasn't that where we left from? No. We Friday left. night we, we stayed at the campsite, didn't we? In yeah. Newman Sound. And we left from there. And we left from down there at the wharf, wasn't it? Yeah, we came all the way up along here, in around that little island. And then there's Minchin's Cove itself, that was a uh it was an old sawmill, wasn't it? Yeah. Didn't they used to build ships, schooners no. there? No, that was just a sawmill in there. That was just a sawmill. The whole of the bay was full of slabs, remember that? There was a um, old wheel, actually it's still on the beach there. Which was the flywheel and uh, the crankshaft all in one. But that's, I think it was Is eight kilometers return. 15, 20 years ago? Am I wrong by saying that? can't be that long. It was at least 12 or 13 years at ago. At least 12 or 13 years ago. I had to go back and check the, the record. That's an open sound right there. This must be obviously you started tearing over river. Or where the tearing over river comes out of it. No, nope, there's not tearing over river, it's southwest. Yeah, sure. Tearing over river was this. Makes the salt fresh out of it. Yourself. So would you say that walking trail goes right up through Newman Sound? That'll go right over to Newman Sound Campground. I've never done it, but the... Has that bus pulling in there. Little breeze on the water, but it's not bad. Let's go have a little look at the visitor center, shall we? Buddy, this place is on wheels. There's some people here. It's a busy spot. Especially there now, everybody coming off the bus. <laughs> Good few years, buddy, since I've been here. Well, it's a few years. Every now and then we'll stop in for a visit. So where was it we launched from? Up there. The campground. Further up, yeah. Yeah, Newman Sound Campground's further up there. We just went right up along shore. I remember, yeah, we, we came in, came across and came in right here. On the way back, we stopped in here. We stopped in, didn't we? I like that boat. <laughs> it was, um, used to have cameras underwater here, so you'd go inside and watch on the monitors. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I See the that. sea life and that on the, on the floor. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, there was more wind down here than what it was when we were just up on the hill. Yes, Blue five, hill, five minutes it? ago. Up on the hill, there was hardly any wind. Hardly any wind. There was more down here. Some decent kayaks there. How are you doing, sir? Yeah. Uh, myself and Larry just come down here into uh, the visitor center, and we've seen you going across to the boat. Is this your boat over here? Yeah, that's one of the boats that we use there. Wow. Uh, I commented on that earlier. What a beautiful boat. Yeah. Happy Adventure Tours. Mr. Chuck Matcham? Matcham. Matcham. Yeah. Uh, explain, you were just telling us, that I, and, and thank you for doing this, coming on screen to do it uh, on, the, on the video. You're talking about your tours and what you got uh, sure, yeah. set up out here. Yeah. Well, 
as you can see, we got lots of kayaks here. Okay, here, so this is yours. We yes. do okay. kayaks and we do boat tours. Offshore boat tours is really busy right now. Okay, excellent, excellent. And uh, I'll tell you what's, you know, in this area there, because I grew up in this area, that for the last few years, we've had the sperm whales. You've never ever seen one? No, in life. it's a very treat to see one. And, and it's really something. And, and actually, it's kept us really busy because we're pretty full on our morning and afternoon tour. For the last month and for the last three years, we have yet missed going out there and not seeing a whale. Go away. Because there's 15 of them. 15 in this bag? Yeah, there's, there's a, a, a trench there between uh, uh, Salvage and Western Head. Okay. That's about 15, 18 feet deep. 18. Uh, Thousand feet deep. Wow. Or 1800 feet deep. 1800, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and that's where they're too. And the beauty about the sperm whales, like we got a lot of whales now, like the humpbacks are in and all that, but the humpbacks are different places as you go because they're chasing the cake. Right? Exactly. The sperm whales are feeding off that trench. They dive down deep. They're usually, their dives go anywhere from one to two hours or whatever. Go on. And wow. after they do a dive, they come to the surface and they got about a half hour, 20 minutes to a half hour to get oxygen for the next dive. So you got that, they got that window to watch them. So okay. they just stay on the surface. They stay on the surface here. and just uh, are replenishing the, uh, the oxygen. Wow. And then the, when you see their tail, you can forget it because you won't see them for an hour or so. And there, you know, there's 15 of them and it's really uh, so a really good opportunity. Is that something anyway. new in the last year or have they always been a part of I, those whales? I tell you, I, for 10 years, I was trying to see them. The Coast Guard was seeing them all the time because I don't have the time to wait for them to come No, up, no, you, know? you weren't there at the right time. And yeah. you know, like if you go there and, and sit there, you're gonna see, you're guaranteed to it. But where there's so many of them now, there, there's always at least two or three on the surface. That's Where fabulous. there's 15 of them and uh, so that's the draw for you, for your that's business? That's a big draw. You know, we, were, we had lack of icebergs the last couple of years, but the sperm whales has really made our season. As a you know, where else around the island I, do you have I've that never opportunity? Heard, I've never I've heard, never heard of anybody of out, no. you know? And, and uh, we've been, I say, we've been going out every, you know, when the weather is good. Uh, for the last month, we've been going out every day. And Excellent. every time, we can almost guarantee you're going to see a sperm whale. It's just really amazing, you know? So to change, to change chapters here, you were also telling us, and I'd love for you to t explain, uh, Minchin's Cove, a place that myself and Larry have been. Sure, yeah. Now, Mitchum's Cove there, we, t I, I transport people out to Mitchum's Cove uh, for hikers that just want to hike the one way. I also have a yom out there, which is like a yurt. Very comfortable, you know, when you get old at my age or whatever, you want oh, the comfort, well, hey. you want to sleep on the ground. Yeah. But we rent out this uh, yom, which is like a yurt, but it's a septagon. It's in, it, it looks circular, but it's in seven sides. And it has everything that you need, like all your cooking equipment, your dishes, your, your drinking water. Fully equipped. Fully equipped. Barbecue, stove to cook your breakfast. There's a lithium generator there that you can run an electric heater. Uh, and there's also a solar panel hooked in there that gives you lights. So as you mentioned, you provide the transportation we, we, in the car yeah, of, going, of there. going there. We provide a lot of people there will kayak or yeah, hike like in. we did, yeah, yeah. But we provide the, the, the drop off and the and, and the take you out. That's fabulous. And even the people there that they, they want to hike in or they want to kayak, yeah. we will take all their gear out. See, you know, well, kayaking is trying to fit everything into a kayak that yeah, you need, say, for a As you can see, it's, yeah. you don't have much room. And it's though. like hiking. You don't want to hike in with a big... Uh, uh, so if anybody hikes in, if they don't want the transport, we'll transfer all the stuff into the Yom so they can just hike with them. So back per side. night, I'm going to call it, but it, like when you take the people out and then to the next day, what is the yeah, cost, which includes your transportation? Everything there, yeah. Right now it's $200. That's fabulous. And we add on $10 if there's any extra people. Like it's built, I've done this mostly for couples and yeah. whatever. And there's bunk beds, so we'll sleep four people. How far in from the beach, from where the old sawmill used to be? Well, we, it, it, we've got one of the nicest sites in there and it's right on the water. And it's, in that cove, in the back part of the cove, it, it's it's uh, on the it's just before the main campsite. Yeah, yeah, there, right. And I tell you, when I put it there, well, I think it's been six years now, seven years. I was always concerned about cell coverage because okay. there's no cell coverage because Mount Stamford blocks the cell towers. Yeah. Anyway, when we were putting the ohm up, my phone rang. 
Bubble inside fabric. the yom and on the platform that it's on, there's cell coverage. You're saying bonus. So that's it. That's like anybody who's up there, tell them, go, on, go by the yom and you'll pick up a cell single, right? That's awesome. So and it's Happy Adventure Tours. Happy Adventure Tours, yeah. Uh, could you give a phone number? Yeah, uh, the number for booking that I'm using for the tours is... Uh, Seven two eight one one zero five. That's fabulous. Yeah. Well, sir, thank you so no much. Problem. Thanks for your time and yeah. thanks for doing this for a little video. Okay, no That's problem. That's fabulous. Yeah. Thanks and I tell you, like this is opportunity. I'm surprised there's not more uh, marine biologists onto it because it's a great time to study. Getting the word out, and yeah. if we can help, we'll gladly do that. Yeah. No problem. Thank you, All sir. Right. Yeah. I'll catch you guys later. Where are we to? Bunker Hill. It says we're here, but I think we're here. Yeah, we're right actually here. Not there. No, not we're there. Here. I'm right here. <laughs> Bunker Hill. Bunker Hill offers one of the best 360 degree views, which you will see, of all Terra Nova has to offer wetlands, rural forests, coastlines, marine and freshwater environments. Walk the trail, we did enough hiking. You will also discover some of the many programs and practices that Parks Canada employs, did blah, 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 blah. That's where we were just oh, at. Yeah, visitor center, yeah. Down here. Where are we two? This Four. Is... No, we're right here. And number six. Yeah. Sandy Palm is right across from us. Cool. Let's go up to the fire tower. That's not manned anymore, is it? I don't think so. Well, they might check it every now and then, but it's not. I, I wouldn't say it's full time. With the technology now, I don't say it needs it. Right? Up, up the hill. And we're not up there yet. I say she gets windy up there. <laughs> a little breezy. Good spot for the fire tower though. You see pretty much all around the park. We're all a good portion of it. This path towards any animals you'd see. There's a few ponds around that you don't see even driving through, do you? I wish I had a bit better of a zoom, a zoom lens. Or I could fly a drone. There'd be there'd be your best zoom. Yeah. But the zoom on that, you're not gonna see much. Well, you will see a bit, but. Yeah, it's a bit windy for the drone today. Oh, right there, huh? It's the boat going out, huh? That's where we were, too. Yep. Or what? No. No, that's the campground. That's the campground, and that Further over there up. is, yeah. How's your weekend been in Tiranova? The weekend's been great. <laughs> the weather is perfect. Was it, you said, refreshed by your sport? Exactly. Just, was, to, just hey. to get out of town, man. But the weather's been great. A little bit hot yesterday for my liking. Cooler today, but... It worked out great with that other campsite that there was nobody there. So we could set up right there in the, in the shade at that oh, picnic it, table. It was great. Because our site was full sun. This is great when you needed it. Not a bit of wildlife to be seen. Not a bird, nothing. A few dragonflies flew by. <laughs> they're, they're out there. The wildlife <laughs> expedition, the only thing we seen was a dragonfly. And three mosquitoes. Saltwater rabbit. And wild bologna. And a wild bologna, yep. Oh, they're out there. A lot of thick woods there, but you can hide a lot of animals. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Too bad I couldn't hook the camera up to it. <laughs> no, it's pretty, it's not clear. Maybe you should put your glasses back on. <laughs> I can't get close enough to see then. That's an old joke. Oh. 
<laughs> Wicked, huh? I think I'm gonna leave my hat down here. <laughs> I can always pick it up after. The original plan would have been, if it wasn't so windy, was I was gonna fly the drone next to us. All right, I'm starting to get skittish. That's enough for me. Huh? I'm no good for heights, buddy. Yeah, but you go on the chopper. Yeah, it's different. I'm sat inside. <laughs> Lots of wind up here. Come on, Wimpy. That's it, that's my limit. I'm lucky I got this far. <coughs> I thought I was doing pretty good. Yeah, that's the gate up there. The gate is just right here. Great when your buddy's a wimp, isn't it? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't like heights myself, but you're on something solid. I'm okay. If that was moving in the wind? I think, I think what it was for me is looking down. Can you just keep looking up there? Well, I suppose. Don't look down. Hey, Tower and Legacy. Oh. Here we go, Smitto. Something for you to read. Because I can't. There's pictures there, Pete. <laughs> Grab the finger puppets. <laughs> now, this looks like the old one. Or an older one. Turnover National Park has been home to five fire towers over the course of its history. Five, go away, That was a nice one there in the picture. I knew there was a tower at Blue Hill. Oh, okay. Blue Hill, Gross Bag, Park Harbor, and Ochre Hill. Hmm. This steel tower is the fifth and last used. Built in the mid 1980s, it replaced the original wooden tower located on the site of a nearby viewing platform. Oh, Probably there's the one we were, just we were just on. Yeah, that platform. Huh, fire observation. Tower. That wasn't very high compared to this one. No. And it was bigger. It was bigger. You could actually sleep in it, right? Oh, a house down below. Oh, Head to somewhere, I suppose, for bowing the kettle. This tower was in operation until 1998. Art Hefburn, the last fire towerman to work in the park, spent his last day before retirement keeping watch from here. That's why, so it's not in use anymore. But it's obviously kept up. It's modern, you know what I mean? Huh. 